Hey everyone, it's Leslie Hassler here with your Biz Rules Business Coaching, Coaching from the Carpool. As you can tell we're not in the carpool today. That's okay. I didn't think I'd be able to be with you, but uh, schedule is that I was able to get to the chamber a little early for my meeting, so I'm not in the car, which is where I thought I was going to be. Ching. Um, pretty uh, par for the course in small business, right? Is that um, not catch as can, but the fluidity that I think is so necessary to be able to roll with how things shake out. I won't say roll with the punches because that has such a negative connotation. It's not about punches, really. It's just about going with the flow a little bit. Um, and I kind of talk about the flow a lot with growing small businesses. Um, you know, because when you push or you pull too hard in your business to make growth happen, it doesn't happen. It's so interesting. But when there's a flow type of mentality, uh, that's when I think some really great things happen. Well, this week, we have been chatting. I had some coffee, so my, my voice is like, mmm, it's getting a little dry. But we've been chatting about hiring, okay? And we've, we've talked a lot, a lot of different things about having a rock star team talked about if uh, you don't have money, how you can actually get a team in place through a concept called micro temporary cost. That was, I think, on Monday. You wanna know what that is, go back and check. Um, we've talked about hiring employees. We've talked about creating mini-me's. We've talked about um, a lot of different aspects to time. And so today I thought I'd hit on, well, what do you do if it doesn't work? Um, you know, I've had that point. I think the largest staff that I managed at one time probably was a staff of four uh, in my in my small business. And for a lot of bit small businesses, that's that's pretty big. Um, and there was a lot of things I did well, and there's some things I did horribly, horribly. And one of those was my um, hesitancy to say when things weren't going well. You know, and the I think a lot of times we look for big red flags. Well, I'm gonna tell you to look for the small red flags too. And part of that is, if you think about it is, uh, the smaller your organization is, the smaller your business is, the less likely it can handle even the smallest red flags. So I want you to um, be on the lookout for them and when they happen, do something about it. Don't wait, don't think it's gonna just magically, you know, like I said, there's no magic. <laughs> there's no magic that happens. My clients keep telling me, yes, Leslie, there's magic. And I'm like, nope, I, I, I have no magic. So uh, don't come to me for magic. But there's no magic thing that's just gonna make something fix itself. So you have to be that leader in your business to address it. And I think we can address some things very positively. Um, but I want you to get more in the habit of actually addressing them. So how do we address them? Well, first of all, don't let it, don't let time pass. <laughs> I'm just going to say that, uh, time does, you know, tend to make us forget a little bit. Um, and when you're busy, especially if you're busy enough to be bringing on additional staff, whether it's a subcontractor or an employee, or, you know, like I said, the micro temporary costs, when things aren't working, just say, Hey, I need to chat things aren't working, this is what I'm noticing. You know, what can we do to actually improve? And part of this is, is that I think there needs to be an allowance for people working together, allowance for people to understand your expectations. I will say one of my, one of this, the ways that I could have been better when I had staff, let's put it that way, and one way that I heard from my staff is actually, I wasn't communicating completely Right, and so I had to take ownership of that uh, and communicate much more completely. Nowadays, I, I, I start off conversations with, I don't wanna assume that we have the same understanding, so I'm gonna be really specific here and I'll put it in writing so that we get on the same page. I wanna make sure that we're doing that. That's how I compensate, how I make sure I think completely, but you might have a small red flag. Maybe it's a uh, showing up late. Maybe it's a, you've hired uh, someone and you're not seeing the results you thought you would see or you're not seeing the initiation aspects starting, right? Maybe it's you didn't like the way they answered the phone. Maybe it's you've had a complaint from a client or a vendor or, you know, there could be so many things. Things didn't get filed in the right location. Whatever it is, address it, like as soon as it happens and put a smile on your face, right? Because we're all human. I think we lose the fact that we're human and that we are dealing with other humans. Um, but put a smile on your face and say, hey, I noticed this. 
it's a concern for me. I wanted to bring it to your attention. What is it that we can do to ensure that things get back on track? I think that's a fair way of handling things like when things aren't going right with staff. Um, the second part is, is that there needs to be um, an escalation process. You should have it documented, especially when you get into hiring staff, you need to have things like these documented, okay? Because you're, mm, you're increasing your liabilities, right? And while a lot of small businesses won't fall under all the statutes because of business size, you should be on the up and up with these things. So have a documented process that talks about escalation. And that way, should you be in a situation where you need to um, terminate this relationship, invite them to move on to a better relationship for them, you need to know that you can do that and that you've taken the steps that are uh, humanly good, right? They're, they're good, they're fair, and that everybody's on the same page. I don't like situations where we're surprising people um, you know, that may still happen even if you are communicating, but don't let them uh, get too big. Like, know what they are. I know um, there's a couple of things about, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this the best way I can. Sometimes the things that aren't working out aren't technical. Right, we talked about earlier this week about hiring on attitude and not skill. Sometimes the skill's fine and the attitude shifts. Like the attitude is more caustic in an environment. Uh, maybe you've caught your employee stealing. Maybe um, they're taking more liberties. Maybe they're not stealing per se, but let's say they're taking some liberties that you're not comfortable with. Maybe they're um, more of a negative personality than you thought. And so you get the little back talking, like the behind the behind your back kind of talking. That's caustic. I mean, that is, I hesitate to say this, and you know I'm not that negative of a person, um, but that's a cancer. It really does erode so much in the business and so much of your hard work. So pay attention to those, right? And while they're a little more subtle, um, they're a little harder to come down on, don't let don't let that sleeping dog lie because it will impact everything that you're doing. It'll impact your clients, it'll impact your other staff members. I've had um, you know, some very talented people work for me, but the, the judginess actually impacted the morale of even better employees. So the whole, the whole staff's productivity and morale went kunk, right? That is something I didn't address well because I didn't know how. You know, we're, we're figuring it out, you know, being a small business owner is on the job training. And I don't care if you have been in business for 10 years, you're still learning. Every day is a new day. Every day is a new day. So don't let things lie. You don't have the scale. You don't have the size. You don't have the ability to weather those storms. And so as a small business owner, it can have a much uh, stronger effect on um, some things than others. You know, I can give an example to where I am always a cash, cash forward type of a business. Like I don't wanna hold debt. I don't wanna, I don't want liabilities hanging over our heads. I want us to be free and clear. And obviously you can hear me how the way I talk is much more progressively cash positive than necessarily cash negative. I'm not a uh, multi-million dollar company that's holding millions of dollars to be able to make interest. And so I don't mind withholding payments from my vendors. You know, there's there's advanced cash strategies out there that are um, that make businesses a lot of money, but we're, we're a small business. So my personal preference is that we're cash forward. Like as soon as we incur a cost, we're paying it. You know, we're paying within two weeks of that so that it's not hanging. Um, but that was our process, and I had an employee that wasn't following that process. I didn't even know, guys, until I let that employee go. Afterwards, I was paying, paying expenses that I had no idea hadn't really been um, taken care of properly for months, right? So when your business gets complicated like that, as a small business owner, you can't really 
you can't weather these storms, you're right? You don't necessarily have the financial stability. You don't necessarily have the mental wherewithal to be absolutely everywhere at all times. Um, that was an, an employee that I should have let go earlier, but I was too busy, right? I thought it would all shake out. I chalked it up to being new or, you know, uh, difference of opinions or things like that. So I have a much different um, attitude when it comes to this. I, like I said, I think we can be positive. I think we can um, invite people to find new opportunities for themselves. When it's not a good fit, you just need to address it as quickly as you can. Um, three strikes, you're out if, is a, a great little, is my personal moniker, three strikes, you're out. And I've got to be able to move on and really uh, deal with the rest of my business because there's a lot in play. So when you're looking at bringing on vendors, if you've done everything we've talked about, um, subcontractors and employees, if you've documented, if you have been able to say what, you're, what results you're looking for, what's important to you, what matters to you, if you've gone through and documented your processes and made those available to people, if you've hired on attitude, if you've done all your homework, and it's a lot of homework, guys, it's a good foundations, right? Then you've got to enforce them. It's just like anything else in your business. If you don't back them up, they aren't worth a pile of beans, you know, or all the effort that you took to create them. So you've got to protect them and you've got to um, respect those boundaries and, and do those things and then move quickly because I'd rather see you um, hire and maybe not hire so well, um, go ahead and transition out of that relationship so that you can hire somebody even better. And that happens because you're learning and, and you're like, well, that really wasn't as important as I thought it was, so let me try this. Nine times out of 10, who you get back in the door because you are uh, have a new learning, a new awareness of what it needs, that position needs, it's actually gonna be better. So that's a little, you know, the moniker, I think the uh, saying that it is is uh, hire slow, fire fast. Um, I'd rather have you prepared to hire so you can hire quickly and not reactively. So you can be proactive, you can take the time to find the right person, but then yeah, you gotta fire fast. Uh, you just probably don't have the ability to weather those storms. It's not like you can hide in, in inefficiencies like you can in a big corporation. Um, so that's it for today, guys. Remember to uh, like the Your Biz Rules Facebook fan page. We're going to be moving our episodes over there in the next week or two um, for a variety of reasons. But I want, if you're enjoying coaching from the carpool, even when we're in a conference room, <laughs> uh, I want you to be able to still get that great content. Uh, so that's it for today. If you have any questions, comments, other things, let me know. I'll post the uh, Facebook fan page link in the description here in a little bit, and then we'll go from there. So this has been Leslie Hassler with your Biz Rules Business Coaching, and we've been coaching from the carpool. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.